Welcome back. So far, we have talked a lot about the building blocks of Simulink, but we haven't talked much about what to build. And there are certain kinds of tasks that come up over and over again, and for which there are certain tried and true approaches. So today, we'll start talking about some of those, along with ways to address common Simulink modeling challenges. Specifically, we will discuss memory, vectorization and arrays, and buses. The first common situation that I want to talk about is local memory. You may find yourself wanting to store a value in memory from time to time. For simulation purposes only, it may be fine to simply write a new value for the parameter that you want to store into the base workspace via the to workspace block and then to read it as needed with a from workspace block. I'll set up a simple model to illustrate how this works. Once the model is open, I'll open the library browser, navigate to sources, and select a from workspace block. I'll also navigate to Syncs, select a to workspace block, and place that to the right of the from workspace block. I'll create a sample parameter in my MATLAB base workspace, which I'll call test read and which I'll assign a value of one. I'll turn this parameter into an array, and I'll add a series of timestamps along with it. I'll also create a second parameter, test write, which will assign a value of 2. And then I'll go to the commonly used block section of my library browser and pull in a scope, as well as a constant block into the model. I'll give the constant block a value of 3 and feed it into the to workspace block. Then I'll feed the output of the from workspace block into the scope. Now I'll open the from workspace block and tell this block to read the parameter test read from the base workspace. I'll modify the to workspace block similarly to tell it to write to the test write parameter. Now I'll run the simulation. Sure enough, the to workspace block updated the value of the parameter test write from 2 to 3. And the from workspace block read in the value of test read and updated the scope with it. You can use this approach to use your base workspace to store data as a kind of local memory. However, if your code is going onto some hardware, you won't have the benefit of MATLAB's base workspace. In that case, you can set up a discrete model, which is what you would be running on hardware, with a unit delay block. It is often desirable to pair this unit delay block with either a summation, in the case of maintaining a running sum, or with a switch, in the case of checking to see whether a value has changed and then holding in the last value. We looked at an example of this discrete memory logic in a recent lesson with our count and hold logic. Simulink also has a built-in memory block in the discrete section of the library browser, which may be useful for you. There are a few other things that you can do to set up memory, but these three approaches, using the base workspace, using a unit delay, and using a memory block should work for you in most cases. A second common situation that you may encounter occurs when logic needs to be repeated. For example, maybe you have some kind of logic that applies an offset and scaling to a sensor input, and you have 10 of these sensors, whether they are virtual sensors in simulation or real sensors to be run into your embedded compiled simulink code. It is possible to copy and paste your logic as many times as needed, but this is very inefficient. When you take this approach, your model likely runs less efficiently, is harder to read, and is harder to maintain. If you want to add a feature or fix a bug, you'll now have to make the change in 10 places instead of in just one place, which greatly increases the likelihood of making a mistake. Instead of copying and pasting subsystems, consider implementing your subsystem just once and then using the power of arrays. Arrays allow you to take your 10 raw sensor inputs, feed them into your vectorized logic as a single array input, process them as an array, and then receive an array output, which you may do with as you please. For this to work, be prepared to make good use of MUX and DMUX blocks, and keep in mind that certain blocks won't work with vectors, or will need to be configured in a slightly different way than they would if used exclusively with scalars. For an example, let's pull a MUX block and a DMUX block into our model. We'll also make a copy of the scope block and the constant block and pull in a summation block. Let's say you have three different signals for which you want to add one 
to each of the signals. I'm just using this simple example as an illustration of the principle. We will feed the output of each summation into a scope. This logic is inefficient. If I want to make a change, say I want to include a gain block, for example, then I have to make that change in three places. The more times that the logic is repeated, the more inefficient it becomes to troubleshoot and modify the logic. So instead, I'll just make one version of this logic, feed in the three input signals in a MUX block, and demux the results, which I can then feed into a scope block. Let's try it. Now I have a much more straightforward implementation, and an implementation that is easier to read, modify, debug, and overall to maintain. A third common scenario is to have a large number of signals that you want to bundle together. Trying to route all of these signals individually can be messy, and trying to use a MUX block to put them into an array may not be an option, since MUX blocks expect that all signals coming into them have a common data type, and your set of signals may not all have that common data type. Sometimes it is helpful to put a number of signals together and then pull one out every so often as needed for different subsystems, just as you might want to pull an occasional wire out of a wiring harness on a real-world system in order to wire into some device. The solution to this is to use buses. You can find the bus creator and bus selector blocks in the commonly used block section of the library browser. With a bus, you can combine signals of varying data types with a bus creator block, pull them out by name with a bus selector block, and configure them either directly in the model or via an M file. One word of warning on this, maintaining buses requires a certain amount of diligence. If the interface on your subsystems is changing very much during your design process, it might be useful to limit your dependence on buses. To illustrate how this works, I'm going to select a signal line coming out of my first constant block, right-click on it, go to Properties, and give the signal a name. I'll repeat this for the next two constant blocks. Now, I'll delete everything in my model except the constant blocks and the name signals coming from them. And I'll drop a bus creator block into the model and feed the three name signals into it. I'll pull in a scope block and a bus selector block, and I'll make a second copy of the scope block. I'll feed the bus creator block into the bus selector block. Then I'll open the bus selector block and tell it to send the first signal to the first scope. And the third signal to the second scope. If I run the simulation, you'll see that each scope is receiving the correct signal from the bus selector. You'll also notice the bundle of lines between the bus creator and selector blocks. This denotes a bus. Okay, so today we've discussed memory management because you will need memory for many kinds of algorithms. We've discussed arrays because you need to be able to perform calculations efficiently and create models that are readable and maintainable. And you need to avoid duplicating logic. 
and we've discussed buses because sometimes you need to route a number of signals together and buses are helpful for handling signals with varying data types as well as large sets of signals. Next time, we'll continue along this line of investigation and I'll show you some additional Simulink modeling approaches and algorithms that I think you'll find helpful.